It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Cleveland Browns. And it's coming up next. First opened in 1999. There's a good look at First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Miami Dolphins and the Cleveland Browns. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And off we go from Cleveland. And we will see a run back on the opening kickoff. This will be a touchback. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. And here's a look at their leader standing 6-4. Every quarterback in the NFL has a little bit of his own signature style out there. But for this guy, he really plays the game in a different way. It's led to a couple double takes from us up here as we see him as something truly unique. It's not that he's just the strongest passer or the best athlete to ever play the position. He just has a certain way of seeing the action and it allows him to make some special plays out there. They'll throw on first down with Marino. He's got it to Williams. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. To throw again on second down. Marino. Throw left side taken in by Hill. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Marino on play action. This one swung out to Williams. The result only four yards there on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Marino's second down throw incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time to have a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now it's Marino. 
Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And a good sign for them right now to have their young quarterback looking confident on the opening drive. Now, we haven't met a young quarterback, a veteran quarterback. It doesn't matter. We haven't met a quarterback yet that doesn't tell us he's confident about his abilities, right? That's true. But when you're young, it's really important to get off to a good start because it does build up that confidence and allows him to play better as the game goes on. Especially crucial here on the road. On first and 10, it's Moreno. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. Now Marino on first down. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him and I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done you have to throw a number of coverages at him make him think as he's running downfield and hope you can create a little bit of havoc first down Marino throwing left side here and it's complete and all the way down inside the five to the four Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. First and goal. A chance for an early statement here on the road. To throw is Moreno. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. From four yards out. And the Dolphins get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. They got to love that. Nine play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes the score 7-0. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. The kicking team out for Miami as they will send this one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. And a look at the man under center. Now it is eighth season in the National Football League. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but... Haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. They defer to Brown to start the drive. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. 
they'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Another run for Brown on second down. And he powers his way up past the 30. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he is going to have a Browns first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Well, that's how you use your safety valve, CD. He didn't appear to be the intended target, but they got it to him, and he was able to get just enough to pick up the first. And what a great example of where we are right now in the NFL, because if you're a running back, you're not just going to carry it. you got to catch it out of the backfield as well. Those combo guys, they're the ones everyone wants on their team. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Draw play for Brown. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now Graham to throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And they're going to get this up to midfield. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Now Graham on first down. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Nice progress down the field, was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. This is Brown going up the middle. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Off the play fake, here's Graham. And it looked like he got the feet down, did he? Yes, it's a catch. Give him 32 on the play. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field, Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route will run, and the football right on the money. Mike McDaniel, he's going to ask him to take a closer look at this call, and out comes the challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So not successful there on the challenge, and he'll have to be careful from here on out because he'll only have one challenge remaining. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Running right, here's Brown. And he is. 
goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Uh, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. Now the extra point try forthcoming. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Hill going to sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. So Miami coming out for their second drive. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. Marino will look to throw on first. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that'll be incomplete as it's knocked away. But a penalty flag is down. So who's this going to be on? They were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're going to pick up a holding call. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Up the middle, it's Williams. Gets past one man. 18 yards to pick up there. That was huge after being behind the chains on first down to make this second very manageable. Yeah, how much pride do you have in an offense on first down to get that kind of yardage? Because it actually opens up your playbook on second down. You can run it, you can throw it, you keep a defense off balance. I like that phrase, staying ahead of the chains, and they're doing exactly that. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Again, it's Williams. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. Moreno to throw on third. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Clayton. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get an advantage that way. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Moreno to throw. Over the middle, complete. That's Clayton. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. On second down, Williams. Oh, able to avoid him. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 
A Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 38. Now here's a little touch pass as they tap it quickly to their receiver. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. From the 35 on second down, Marino. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. throw and he'll get this into the hands of Hill complete touchdown Dolphins a great play there with his second touchdown in this opening quarter and the Dolphins have moved out in front still first quarter two receiving touchdowns for him how are they going to slow him down I think they're thinking about altering their game plan whatever they came in with now maybe you switch a better cover guy to him or you make sure you have more people in his general area wherever he lines up to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. Extra point attempt to come here. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. The kicking team out for Miami as they will send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as they get this up to the 29. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 35, back to work on second and four. Now it's Graham. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain. So when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Up, 
So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 36. On the handoff, this is Brown. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a first and 10. Here's Graham to throw it. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They'll give him four yards there, and it's second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. An inside give, Brown. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day Graham on third down quick hitter here it's complete and yeah, the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Out of the shotgun, Graham. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns are an extra point away from evening this one up. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom, indeed. Extra point splits the uprights, and we are tied at 14. So that drives seven plays in length, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Taken in at the three. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Their quarterback in this offense heading back out to the field. He's got two touchdown passes on his first two drives, and he'll try again here on drive three. Now Marino. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. 
A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. knew it they were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted the full start backs him up five first and 15 following the penalty it's Williams and this one goes nowhere losing yardage back at the 22 a loss of two there, second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Throwing on second and long. Marino on target over the middle to Hill. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Two touchdowns for him already in this first half. This one good for a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Marino sets up. He'll get it once more. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And this is picked up by the Browns. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You may all of a sudden make your catch see some open field and decide you're going for it and not realizing the danger lurks while you're doing so and there's your end result right there for the Browns good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at their own 37 Following the fumble recovery, Graham. Complete to Newsom. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. First down, here's Graham. He's got a man complete. And they've got this down to about the 12 yard line. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. 
To throw once more here is Graham. Quick slant. That's caught by the 5'11 Landry. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. The Browns on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. They're looking at third in the nose of the foot. And that's going to be caught for the Browns touchdown. A great effort there. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Browns have moved out in front. Well, CD, that's his second touchdown already. And how about this offense? Three drives, three touchdowns. An absolute total team effort right now. And let's face it, I don't think he's done. We're still in the first half. There's a lot of time left to go. I don't know what they're going to do on the other side trying to slow him down. But right now, he's feeling it. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead is now 21-14. Five plays there on that drive. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. After the touchdown, it's Dawson on to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And the Dolphins getting set to go here. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. Throwing on second and eight. Marino looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And a six-yard game gets him right around the 43. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Now Marino to throw it. It's caught on the right side. Williams. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing. And now we've got a third and four. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right the line scrimmage. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Here's Marino. Throw left side complete. That's Hill. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. 
I know I'm an old defender, but I've got to give credit where credit's due. That was smart play calling right there on third and four. They didn't need to do too much. Just let their guy get out there and sit down in the zone. And they hit him for the completion for the first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now it's Moreno. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Handing it off to Brown. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. That's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides. But to see the ball in a running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. They'll throw on first down with Marino. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Marino's incompletion on first down leads to second and ten. He'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Clayton. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now a first carry for their fullback. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Good solid gain on first down, about what you'd expect from the big guy carrying the ball. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They'll hand it off now. Williams. And he dropped it about the 11 after only a yard. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the shotgun, Marino. This is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. 
I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he is in. Touchdown, Miami. It's a one-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes, because that's what we've seen <laughs> with these offenses. Yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far, and fun to watch. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. He's got it, and we're all tied at 21. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kicks away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. And the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth. If you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Throwing now, Graham on first down. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Graham will throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Graham. This will be caught by Brown. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. They'll get nine out of that one. As a result, the drive continues. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sensed that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. On first and 10, it's Graham. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. On the move past the 40. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Again, it's Graham. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. The 
This offense continues to be a hot knife through butter. Three drives, three scores, and knocking on the door again on drive number four. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. You got to go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Now Graham to throw. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. The storm windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Graham here from the shotgun. Got a man and he hits him in stride. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And the 13-year man puts it through. And with it, they'll take the lead at 24-21. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. This one taken just inside the 10. A solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. play of the half. It's Marino. He's going to float this over the middle deep. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll head down to Orlando. That's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats for that first half for Miami. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200-plus yards already through two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Browns, they, too, were able to take advantage of a soft secondary as both of these two teams really threw the ball at will in that first half. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. These offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? Taking in at the three. 
And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And the Browns offense getting set to go to work here to start the third. Now Graham on first down. Got a man. It's Brown. And down right near the 25. Able to break through that initial contact. Got him some extra yardage. Two yards on the pickup there. And it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Oh, man, it's caught at the six-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, he's been doing this for a lot of years, with the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And he made that look effortless, didn't he? I mean, he's had a great game throwing the football. This is going to add to his yardage total in a big way. It's one thing to be accurate on your short and intermediate throws, but when you're hitting the bombs like those... Look out. And that throw, amazingly, well over 70 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. Wow. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Graham going to set up to throw. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. And that's a great job of tackling right there. If he could have made the first man miss, maybe he could have taken it into the end zone. Instead, they stopped him pretty well right in his tracks. And you often see that in the red zone. Offense has to be quick. In this case, the defense was quicker. Back at the five-yard line now. Second and goal. Now it's Graham. Touchdown! A five-yard touchdown. And the Browns take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. They're down in this part of the field, CD. They'd love to get him the football. And right there, a little pitch and catch for the score. Yeah, and he's such a weapon when it's that close to the end zone. And they love being able to rely on him to make those kind of catches. Talk about trust, talk about confidence, and he produces. Now the try here for the pulling after. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. After the touchdown, it's Dawson on to kick it away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that will lead you into bigger errors. Play fake. Here's Marino. 
This one swung out to Williams. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. And some room to run now. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 75 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Pretty explosive run on that inside handoff, and when you're a runner of his caliber, you don't need a big crease. You really don't, but also what we're seeing is an offensive line that's taking charge at the point of attack, aren't we? Not only are they controlling the initial contact, they're actually utilizing what they call the strain, the next two to three seconds, to continue to move people. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. To throw is Marino. That one thrown away from the pocket. And the officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. On second and ten, Marino are into a sea of defenders and intercepted. And the Browns are going to take possession here at their own 33. Well, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And, Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Here's Graham to throw it. It's complete to Brown, right side. To the 40 and no further. The razzle-dazzle, though, got him a couple extra on the play. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage to be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. They'll run on third down with Brown. Well, they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. Mm -hmm. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo sack. The Browns send out their punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Dolphins' drive will start deep in their own territory with a first and ten.
They begin the drive with Williams. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They go play action now. Marino. And this will be incomplete. That's what this Cleveland crowd, the dog pan in particular, make it difficult on opposing offenses. It looked like they might have had troubles communicating at the line, and it leads to the incompletion. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Marino here from the gun. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Marino to throw. And that's incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. And every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Marino's incompletion on first down leads to second and ten. They'll look to throw again. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. So back-to-back -to -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To throw again is Marino. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll only get this to about the 35. Well short of the line to gain. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns will take over with a first and ten deep in their own territory. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. A pass there over the middle to start things out. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. First down, here's Graham. Another one caught by Collins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Another connection between the two. This one good for 12 and a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode 
Really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Back to throw. Graham. That's complete. It's Collins. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. Well, so far, little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to him, and it's paying off. So now first and ten as they've crossed into Miami territory right at the 40. Again, he'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Brown. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. There it is, the defense waking up after three plays that hurt them. Finally, they stand up. They have a little pride, too, you know. Three straight first down type plays. Yeah, they didn't want to make one stick on their side, didn't they? This a second and seven from the 37. This is Brown on the draw play, fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That was a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Looking to throw, Graham. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Frankly, I don't know that this defense knows what to do anymore. Just look at their body language out there. The passing game has absolutely been relentless throughout. to throw. Graham. And it's caught. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. From the two now, second and goal. Brown. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. They'll give it to Chubb. No gain on the play, and what to do now on fourth and goal. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what, oh, right? Yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. They'll try and run for it with Brown. And they'll take it into the end zone for Brown's touchdown. A great play there with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. But this defense held out as long as they could, but ultimately the running game wears them down from the one-yard line. And that gets set up throughout the entire drive, doesn't it? And when you put those big bodies and determination into that carry, the end result, touchdown. Extra point attempt here still to come. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. 
A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, it's Dawson on to kick it away. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They'll try and run with their fullback. A gain of three, second down. A good solid game there on first down, but the defense has to be happy they didn't let it pop for anything bigger. Ball at the 26, second and seven. Up the middle, it's Williams. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's Dolphin football, but they trail here as we get set for the fourth. Marino to throw on third. And that is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Here we go. It's Marino on fourth down. Over the middle, it's complete. And he will have a Dolphins first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down. Trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You stop to get it done as you noted. And they did. They'll throw on first down with Marino. And it's a short one here. Complete to the tight end. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Marino looks to toss it again. And quick throw here, that's complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 41-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches... You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. On first and ten, it's Marino. Man open left side is Brown. And they'll work this down inside the 30. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but... Certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, 
a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Marino will look to throw on first. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Clayton. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Throwing again on second down. Marino. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Touchdown, Dolphins! From 10 yards out. And the Dolphins have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Extra point forthcoming. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. The kicking team out for Miami as they will send this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Cleveland offense making their way out. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. They'll throw on first down with Graham. He finds his... Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And the return will stop right around the 25. Partner, that would look like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not done in the fourth. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. They trail by two scores in the fourth, and their defense did its job getting the fumble recovery. A time to see what this offense has left in the tank. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there of the point of attack, holding up, 
They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Marino. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating the defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. The Dolphins on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This is third and nine. That would complete to Hill. And he's going to be marked down short of the first down, right around the 17. They wind up getting seven on the play. And it'll be fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it. And then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming from the left hash. This from 34. And his kick is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. So kind of disappointing there. I mean, yes, they get the three, but with starting field position like that, three's not what you're banking on. No, and you just have to wonder if you can afford to let chances like that continue to pass you by. You've got to find ways to get the ball into the end zone and put sixes on the scoreboard. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago. So they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. They defer to Brown to start the drive. Solid move, thought he's corralled just beyond the 40. 58 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. He finds his man complete. That's Collins. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. Now a give left side, Brown with it. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory right at the 40. Now Graham. Complete to Newsom. And they work this down inside the 30. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards. So tough to cover a big tight end like that. It changes the chalk, as one of my coaches like to say, meaning 
the normal things don't apply. All right, you used to say, okay, there's a tight end going out. We're either going to put a big linebacker on him or maybe a safety and call it a day. Now, because of the strength of that position and the sheer number of catches that they make as, as well as their dexterity, sometimes you have to put a cornerback on him because he might be the primary guy going out for a pass. It changes what they do defensively, and it's usually not good for the defense. Yeah, he's able to skip away from that first defender on his way to a pickup of five. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him, ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Oh, fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Now Graham on first down. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Graham to throw. Now quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Well, based on the play we just saw there, he might not be the guy you want to challenge in coverage on these all-important snaps. He certainly looks dialed in right now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Graham will throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. On that snap, he's the hero of his defense after the play he just made. A one-possession game, and his hit kept it exactly that. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And his kick is indeed good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. Now after the main field goal, here's Dawson back out now to send this one away on the kickoff. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Dolphins ready to take over on offense. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Jet sweep to start the drive. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays, you know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. On second and 12, Marino. 
That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for nine. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. On third down, Marino. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Of scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Shotgun handoff to Brown here, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now it's Moreno. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. The Dolphins on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. They're looking at third and a few inches. Now Marino to throw it. Over the middle, complete. That's Clayton. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now, meanwhile, Marino with the incomplete pass, it was knocked away. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Marino's incompletion on first down leads to second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Marino sets up. He is going to find Hill here. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. Of course, remember, you need a touchdown here and a field goal. Doesn't matter the order, but they have to get it done and get it done fast. First down now, but that clock rolling. Throwing here, Marino. He finds his man complete. It's Clayton. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here's Marino. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Now 
That's Marino. And this is caught down for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They had the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> So with just over a minute to play, this becomes a make-or-break onside kick. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical This is Brown going up the middle. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Got to figure the rush is going to be fierce again as they come up second and 13. Right back to Brown. And some space here. And yeah, maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25 yard line. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Yeah, the Dolphins beef up the secondary here as they look to stop them on third down. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. And Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to one possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. And in this case... These offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward. 